So then we are back with more understandings from the time of the Second Tabernacle Service where we find in the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Itzayelic lineage. So then we can understand the time of the end. As per Yerushiach the prophet, then we find a layer of understanding of the time of the spring feast, autumn feast, and the returning of the holy cities of the Messiah laid waste for many centuries. So then let's understand then what goes on with the politics as far as, as the world then transitioning itself from the time of the seat where the Babylonian system got mixed up with what they thought was from then the Itzayelic lineage where then the prophet Daniel mentioned then the set apart would get mixed with the world for a time but then this mixing would have to be then obviously separated in order for the resuming of the second tabernacle services during the time of the restoration period. So then we find ourselves then understanding the plan of the United States of then uniting the Babylonian systems under a control. The Secretary of State is then in the Northern Kingdom trying to mesmerize the leaders over there and from there he wants to go to Rome. It is truly a waste of time. Because whatsoever we understand from the separation of the set apart in the world for a time, thus then the time of the seat, it is permanently separated. So then whatsoever has then the agenda of the Secretary of State of going to Rome, it is absolutely a waste of time. Because the world is taking then the understanding and then obviously the starting of the new system where then the only truly understanding of this Catholic system or then the Babylonian mixed with the, what they thought was some sort of a savior from the time of the thousand years of deceit only work ethics can work on their behalf as far as, as the Catholic understanding of the scripture it's absolutely a joke it was a scandalized system because then during the time of the holy cities those people they were not paying taxes. Not those from the set apart from the holy cities but those countries that would benefit from and did benefit from the teachings of the holy cities thus then the Asian market. That's why the Asian market is so prominent because of the teachings of Shaliak Shaul and during the time of the holy cities. So then, understandably, we find then the scripture from the Greco and the Romans being absolutely a joke. So let me ask you this. Since we understand the holy instructions from the Itzayelic lineage, what is the point of going then to Rome? The system of the Babylonians, or then the market going up and down, sideways and and not being stable. What can we expect of this visit? The Chinese at some point they must have hired the services of the Northern Kingdom. Thus then the Babylonian must be placed under the control of trade not religion. That's where again our system then falters. We don't understand anymore there is not a religious aspect of trade of then manipulation and deceit. No longer exists. We can't make the pretense of God of America then protecting its trade because we believe some sort of a God. We understand the God of this nation is absolutely ridiculous has brought our nation to ruin. So do they think then the Catholic system can save them? Absolutely not, because the separation of then the set apart and the world must be then absolutely defined. That's then the returning of the cities of the Messiah. Re-establishing then the position of the holy cities as tabernacling and trade as where they used to be. Pure trade. No religion involved. So then, we find the Northern Kingdom then experiencing 
a bit of confusion and obviously they must try then of sorting through what goes on. This visit of the Department of State then and Rome is absolutely ridiculous. Nothing is going to come out of it. What can they prove from the instructions from the Bible where they are at? What are the plans of the Creator from their Bible? What can they define as a plan of the future? Well, let's try to ask then the head of the Department of State of the United States if he understands what is the plan of the Creator. How does he define our economy being absolutely ruined? And his plan of joining up with Catholics. Where he can be then defined as far as, as the plan of the future? Trade. Is he going to say, oh, because America used to be? Because he's trying to do what America used to do in the past? What about our industry? Isn't that the stick of measuring, or the measuring stick evaluating what we used to be versus what we used to produce? So the main aim of this visit to Rome is to lie to the people as they lied for centuries. It's the same old junky plan of the past. Mesmerizing the people with religion, deceiving them, and then trying to evaluate another outcome. Ridiculous beyond measure. Firstly, because the Pope is from South America. The Pope is not stupid. So let's evaluate from the Pope's perspective. He understands his scripture, it's absolutely a piece of junk. Those translators of the Greco Romans, they translated the Holy Megillus wrongly. The Pope has nothing going his way as far as, as the true understanding of the scripture. So let's eliminate religion from the Pope. What do you have from a Pope without instructions or then scripture? you find in a club. A club of people with an aim. What is the aim? The only aim left of a trades perspective in order to maintain the club is work ethics. If the Pope then is not stupid, he would evaluate United States is bankrupt. He evaluates then Japan is bankrupt. But he is from South America where the Mercosur is at. So let's try to evaluate how he is going to maintain his club. Is he going to join up himself with those bankrupt? Those people that lost? Got no aim? Mesmerizing the people? And destroying his own club? Or would he then be firm with the South Americans and remain then loyal to the Mercosur? You know what then the Secretary of State is going to hear? Work ethics. It's the only point on favor of the Pope. So he's heading towards a very nice teaching of work ethics. If the Pope is smart, because the Pope might be stupid. He might try to go along with the uh, junkies of America and say, oh yeah, you know, should this, that, and the other, and try, you know, to do what he used to do. But then he knows it doesn't work. Then he would place his reputation on the line. So if the Pope is smart and wants to maintain his system, He's already from South America and down there truly works as far as, as the Mercosur is concerned. And the major play of the Mercosur is then from the Brazil's viewpoint part of the BRICS. 
So if the Pope has brains and then understanding of what is normal and protecting a system of his based upon ethics of trade and he has then influence with Brazil and South America already part of the BRICS of directed trade then what then the Secretary of State would be expecting to hear from there? Now the Pope can either you know, go along with it and then destroy his reputation because South America does not like Americans. Let's be very frank. Because they understand our economy never worked. It only did for a time because what China is doing as far as, as a civilian military style of production, this country used to know. And there is nothing in this country going for our favor anymore. Our country is ruined. Our economy is ruined. We are bankrupt. So then, if the Secretary of State thinking of going to Rome and mesmerizing the Pope with his junkies, he's going to get surprised. Because if the Pope goes along with the United States, the Pope can forget the relationship with South America. As he does, then Brazil part of the BRICS, then they have no relationship with the Pope. Because then the Pope became stupid as the people of the West. So the only normal outcome of this visit is receiving some very interesting teaching as far as work ethics. Understanding direct trade so they can avoid the midman. That's the destroyer of systems. And then retrieve and rebuild our country. As you would expect from a normal person. Working both ways is not going to work. Because Brazil being the largest country in South America, they are already part of the BRICS. They already have a system of their own with BRICS. U.S. monetary system is no longer used. They have their own banking. Now let me ask you this. Would those countries from South America would adopt a system that is bankrupt? 